I have always felt that business leaders want to help, want to be part of the solution, but often don't know where to start. It all feels so complicated, the problems so big, so daunting. And what the research unpicked was the personal journeys that so many leaders find themselves on. Thinking about what their legacy as a leader is, what their role and responsibility as a leader is, how they have a role to play, if at all, in the wider societies in which they operate and engage. So the research both showed us some of the challenges that business leaders face in coming to grips with both these opportunities um, and these obstacles, but also some of the personal stories that they've had and how it's changed their being, their management style, uh, and even how they behave as human beings. When we talk about being a responsible leader, we're talking really about how you lead and manage a responsible business. And in our terminology, being a responsible business isn't about your philanthropy. So it isn't about the giving back that so many people talk about. It's how you go about running your business and how you go about doing your business and how you generate your profits, not just how you give your profits away. Um, and in the process, the responsible leader needs to think about how they treat the planet, how they manage complex global supply chains, how they create engaged, healthy, diverse workforces who are the principal advocates of that business, but also how they engage in the communities in which they operate uh, around big issues like education, employment, enterprise, culture. And the seeing is believing visits begin to give people that opportunity of experiential learning of saying, how do I take ideas and philosophies and aspirations that we have and turn them into practices that make sense for my business, that, that my teams will understand that we can measure and manage like we do other aspects of our business, that, that our customers will embrace and, and even our investors and wider stakeholder groups will understand. And that's both the challenge and the opportunity. When I challenge business leaders about whether they're doing enough in this space of responsible business and responsible leadership, I often hear a consistent refrain. Uh, yes, they're doing a number of things, often quite anecdotal. But when I push and probe a little bit, uh, I hear some consistent responses. And that is that they could and should be doing more but. But it's so complicated, they don't know where to start. They're feeling great time pressures uh, and conflicting priorities. And that's in part a reflection of how short term the tenures are of many leaders today. And they're also expressing a, a sense of frustration that that sometimes their customers don't want to pay for it, their investors don't ask about it or understand it. So part of the challenge of our work and part of the opportunity in a seeing is believing visit is helping people overcome that. When we look at the findings of the research, we saw many examples of people who early on didn't quite understand where to go, what to do, what the role of their business could be in solving these problems. And when exposed to a social issue where they live and work alongside of other business leaders who were going through the same kinds of experience, they have these lightning bolt moments that maybe they can't solve everything, but they can solve something. And once they get started on that journey, it leads to bigger and better things. A couple of months ago, we had a thousand senior business leaders gathered along with the Prince of Wales to reflect on this very question about what is it that we need to do. And what we called for that day collectively was a new contract between business and society, a new type of leadership that would take these ideas and theories from practice uh, into action. Uh, a different kind of approach to integrating this behavior within a business. And in the process, making sure that you bring your key stakeholders, like your customers, and your investors along with you on this journey. And the role of transparency in all of that, because we are living in a digital age where news travels very quickly. And so um, being transparent and being consistent and being honest are critical. So we then talked about what are the sort of leadership behaviors that people need to emulate. And these are not particularly new ideas, but ideas that we sometimes forget. Uh, both creating short and long-term visions, but also making sure that your behavior is aligned to that, that your reward systems and structures are consistent with that, that you are communicating, relentlessly communicating with your employees and your customers and your wider stakeholder groups about why this matters to you as a business. Um, we've talked quite a bit about how leaders have to 
be aware of the shadows that they cast in their business, that um, too many people out there are concerned that senior business people are only in this for themselves, that they are protecting the investments of the investors' interests uh, and the senior management's interests, but not so concerned about the customers and employees and others within an organization. So how do they change and alter some of those behaviors? Part of what we call for leaders to think about is how do they develop the leaders of the future? What role does experiential learning have to play? Opportunities like our seeing is believing visit. How do you make sure that you're recruiting people who understand what responsible leadership is all about? And how do you make sure you provide them the developmental opportunities they need to develop and nurture those skills? And how do you reward all of that? And also, how does a leader act as an advocate for this responsible business agenda. And sometimes it's managing up, making sure that you're engaging your boards, your investors, governments on this issue. How do you work with other business leaders, both in your sector and outside, to develop and collect these attitudes and ideas?